Hi, thank you so much for joining me. In this video segment, I want to show you the effect we have on our equilibrium constant K when reactions are manipulated. It's common to want to take reactions that are known or easier to know and try to use those reactions, combine those reactions in some way um, to provide information of a different but related reaction. And so we want to see the effect such manipulations have on K. And what we can do, there are three things we're going to do. We are going to reverse a reaction. We are going to multiply a reaction by a factor. And we are going to add reactions. And we want to see the effect on K. So let's look at this first one. This is HI squared. These are all gases. You always want to check your states to make sure you include them all over H2 times I2. So no, no mathematical relationship there because we haven't done anything yet. Now, let's see what happens when we take that reaction and we reverse the reaction. In this case, I now have H2 times I2 over HI squared. It's hopefully not too challenging to see that what has happened is that KC2 is equal to 1. K concentration, terms of concentration, 2 is just because I'm talking about reaction 2 here, is equal to the constant for the first reaction, KC1, inverted. So I reversed a reaction, I inverted my K. Let's look at this next one. How, what, did, what happens when I start with my first reaction and this time I've multiplied it by one half? I know you're used to seeing reactions balanced using whole number coefficients, and that's how you should always balance it. But there are times that we really do need a 1 here. And um, so that would mean I have a half of a diatomic. It's not physically meaningful, but it is mathematically, and it really helps us out. Um, so this time I have HI in my numerator over H2 to the 1 half times I2 to the 1 half. So you notice this was really 2 times 1 half. So if you think of it that way as being 2 times 1 half equal to 1, right, because we multiplied everything 1 half, what we see is this third KC is equal to our original one to the same power as what our multiplier was. So our multiplier was one half and our power is now one half. If you can compare this to this, you see that we, that we took the square root or took it to the one half power. Okay, so when we multiplied by the power, we raised k to that same factor. And that's what we did with that mathematical manipulation. Okay, now for this next one, we're going to take two reactions and we're going to combine them to make a third. So let's take a look. We don't include solids, yes, gas, no solid, yes, gas. So this one's going to be H2 over H2O. This next one, no solid, no solid, okay? And so now we have CO2 over CO. Now if we add those two um, together, what we get, I want you to notice, we're going to take and add these two reactions together. Uh, my students have seen this before. We've seen this when we did um, mechanisms. You're going to treat that, e that double arrow 
as an equal sign, and if things show up on both sides, they're going to cancel. So that was a reactant and a product, so it will cancel. That's a product and a reactant, so it will cancel. And now we're going to bring everything down that doesn't cancel. And then we get our final reaction. So let's write the K for that and see if we can figure out the relationship that K3 has to our two original reactions. So I have hydrogen, all gases, so we include them all, whoops, CO2, over H2O. I'm doing this in black with bright colors. One of my students, Rachel, said she really liked this, so I thought I'd do a few videos for her this way. Okay, now, Hopefully you can see that this is simply, we added reactions, and what happens is K1 times K2 was equal to K3. So this is K1 from up above, this is K2 from up above, and when we added reactions, we multiplied their K values. So let's summarize that in a reaction, then I'm going to throw in one little bonus uh, for you. If a reaction was reversed, you take the inverse of the original to find your new K. If you multiply by a factor, you raise K to a power, that's a capital, the K power is that factor. So if you multiply 2, you square K. If you multiply by 3, you cube K, and so forth. If you add reactions, you multiply equilibrium constants. And then one final, and just because it's kind of an awkward thing to do all by itself, um, is the relationship between KP and KC. And if you are in an AP class, this is not covered as an objective in AP. Uh, but I teach IB and college chemistry, and I just think it's good for you to know this. If you have K in terms of partial pressures, it relates to K in terms of concentrations by a factor of RT to the change in moles, uh, whoops, I don't know why I put an M there because I was saying moles and writing N, and this is of gas. So you check your moles of gas uh, in a reaction, and um, you know, all the ones that I happen to have right in front of me, they're equal, but let, let, me, let me throw one up here. Let's go back to that HI example. I have H2 plus I2 uh, going to HI, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch it up just a little bit. In this case, we're going to take hot hydrogen gas and we're going to blow it over solid I2 and we're going to form gaseous HI. I just made that up so we'd have a different reaction. So how do I find delta N for that? Well, the change in moles for gas, I have two moles of for product. I only have one in the gas, so it'd be 2 minus 1, or delta N would be equal to 1. So in that case, Kp would equal Kc times R, and you have to use 0.0821. It was derived from that times whatever temperature you are measuring this at. Okay, so that gives you a, a little bit of idea of one more of the mathematical relationships involved with our equilibrium constant expression. Thanks for joining me. Take care.